Terran versus Kaibon. You've probably heard some of the recent chatter about Stassen. So how excited am I to finally cast one of his Chiron games? Might as well give him some kind of puffball opponent. Maybe some no-namer like Magical Cookie aka you. And we're gonna do it on the eccentric map, Neo Humanity. So many odd little features on this map. For example, it's very subtle, but there's actually slightly more minerals in the main base than usual. Same number of patches, but one of them is larger, which actually gets you an extra 900 minerals in that base. Opening edifice goes down, that tells me we need to do some intros. Interesting trivia point about our Terran player in the lower right. His blood makes up 8% of his body weight. Yes, I'm talking about you! We recently saw you defeat the Genitron as Terran. Can he do it against the Chiron? If you missed that game, I feel bad for you, son. I got 99 problems, but the Gen ain't one. Well, that sounded really cool when I thought it up in my head anyway. Stassen's gonna expand. Better introduce our Chiron player in the upper left in blue is a pro football player from Belgium. He is Stassen. Oh yes, you get your rap classics, you get your Flemish soccer, we got it all here. Oh, you just performed the Terran Triple, that's an SCV Scout, Reaper Production, and an Orbital, pretty much all at the same time. And he makes it look so easy as he heads over and expands. You'll notice how incredibly tight that ramp is to the main. Very defensive, but probably irrelevant as both our players have already expanded. Sanctum finishing off for Stassen. He's got an early Volt in good position to greet that SCV if it comes up that ramp. Oh, double Sanctum. We haven't seen that in a long time. SCV is going to see it. Oh, he's definitely going to die, but he is going to get the key scouting info. He SCV definitely caught ready. the expansion, and if he managed to click on it, he'll know that there's a double Sanctum on the way. That was the first blood, by the way. We can relax now and all have fun. Those are the buildings you get to blow up there. Thank you, Reaper, for demonstrating that in a timely way. And also showing the rich gas geysers in the center of the map. This map has everything. Oh, the natural's unguarded. Reaper's gonna slip in here. Just one mouse to pick off. But Stassen's actually gonna save it. It's three to one. Reaper doesn't like his odds. He gets out of there. There is a Reaper door on this map, too. Looks like he's gonna try for it. Did Stassen cover the back door? He did not. Reaper's gonna slip in. Stassen fires off and energized to give his harvesters that extra shielding. KD-8 charge in the mineral line, bouncing mice. Volt's racing up the ramp to deal with this. And you knows the party's over. He gets out of there. And it looks like his grenade did get a kill. Meanwhile, back at the Terran Ranch. Factory's up, reactor's on the barracks, and another CC is getting built. He's also putting up a safety bunker. He knows he's forcing out a lot of volts here. Ooh, Stassen mining the gold minerals on the side there. Reaper gonna try again, he might see this. But the volts are in position. Yu gets a grenade off and then pulls back just before his Reaper dies. Perfect timing. Two more Sanctums for Stassen, he's taking it up to four. We're gonna be seeing Pulsers or Subjectors or both. Pulsers have been making a real comeback in the meta as of late. And as soon as I say that, it's a Subjector that shapes in. A Subjector has terrific range and can really cause a problem for a Reaper. So you'll see with just two trips you can get rid of that golden node, which will actually give Stassen access to one base over. It does though create an additional hole where that Reaper can slip in. Third CC finishes up for you. We've seen him do this before. Rather than fly it right away, he uses it to make additional SCVs for his natural. What he does is he speeds up the rate of saturation. The Subjector is a terrific anti-air unit. For a while, we used to see them everywhere, kind of like stalkers. But they kind of dropped off the map for a while, so I'm kind of glad to see them back. Very defensive position for Terran. He's fully loaded that bunker and he has a tank behind it. But Stassen's not attacking. He's taken that third. Due to the magic of mules, it's Terran that has the income lead right now. But an extra base for the Chiron could change that, especially if he keeps on top of his energizes. Use adding that starport and also two more Raxes. Terran goes for defense and powers up behind him. Oh, the Reaper made one foray too many and the Subjectors had no trouble shutting that down. And with that, I officially declare that we are transitioning into the mid-game here. 
Stassen starts the first upgrade of the game at the Reliquary. It's plus one biological weapons. He's also making an Elysium, mostly just because he enjoyed the movie starring Matt Damon, but also because he probably wants to make a crux. If he does, I hope he researches Convergence, because I think that is a bang on spell against Terran tanks. Some players are getting good at dodging Convergence, but siege tanks don't dodge very well when they're sieged up. And being mechanical, they take the full brunt of that spell. Oh, there's a Viking coming out of that starport, not a medevac. Which is almost eerily prescient because Stassen has warped in an aperture. That's the Chiron dropship, but with nifty teleportation effects. It looks like Stassen has loaded it with double pulsars. I've never seen a pulsar drop before, this is cool. And it's not just a pulsar drop, he's advancing across the map with his main army. It's a two-pronged assault, one of these is meant to be a distraction. Full wall off for Terran. You is not gonna make this easy. Chiron could really smash itself against that defense. He'll need to make a judgment call here. Always found a sweet spot where he can outrange the tank and the bunker. But tank number four is rolling forward. This is so dangerous for Chiron. Hopefully the main force is actually the distraction force. The real attack is with the pulsers, but where is that Viking? Is the Viking in position where it can intercept? The aperture's in position, but it hasn't moved. This is tense. Terran has a strong defense here. The Viking sees it. He's going after the aperture, but the pulsers do get down. Stassen has found the crack in the Terran D. He gets inside and starts going after SCVs. There's the pull. The economic damage starts now. Look at you though here, not overreacting. He keeps his front line in place. Excellent crisis management. Did Stassen get his money's worth? He paid with two pulsers, probably with that mineral line pull. His aperture actually got away and is still at large. So not too shabby by our Chiron player either. One thing that Stassen's really achieved here is he's forced you to make a lot of army units. And if he stays bottled up with them turtling, that's gonna give an advantage to Stassen. It backfires if you counterattacks and Stassen doesn't have the army in place to defend in time. Stassen invests in a second reliquary, but also a conduit that builds the charges for the echoes and the fuse. He's also finished up his foundry while still adding yet another sanctum. Stassen is pulling back his main army. I think that's absolutely the right choice. He can only really throw it away at that Terran front door. Oh, and he is researching convergence. I'm happy about that. And nice, his natural has rallied its newly made converters over to the third through the hole in the mineral patch. And he's making a fourth. And he's grabbed the watchtowers. Did you get them both? Yep. Yep. Yes, Stassen looking pretty mighty. And he's adding volt speed. You feeling solid enough that he's gonna take his third. He probably thinks he's finally catching up on bases. And that is not gonna be the case for very long. What he does have is a sizable army lead. So even though he's forced to abandon that excellent wall defense he put up, he should still be pretty confident that he can hold on to that third. Especially since, if I'm right, Stassen has no real intention of attacking right now. He's focused on upgrading and expanding. But he's not the only one teching Ghost Academy for Terran. Ghost should be very efficient against Chiron. Similar to how steady targeting AKA Snipe works so well against Zerg, so many Chiron units are biological, a lot more than you'd think. And since every Chiron unit has shields of some kind, that means EMP is gonna be pretty good too. Stassen's researching Dissonance Projector. That's cloak for your echoes when they're in Discord mode. Speaking of Discord, if you wanted to join the Scion Races discussion, the Discord invite link is in the description below. Oh, Stassen looking to prove me wrong here. He's pushing out against that third. It's a low-tech army at this point, but he's got some crux mixed in there. If he can get some convergence on the tank and some lightning bolts on the marines, it might be possible. He's hitting before the ghosts come out. But that's a lot of well-spaced tanks. Convergence eliminates one tank and weakens the second. Love the depot wall protecting those workers. That third is a tough, tough take, and it's only going to get harder. Ghosts coming on the field now. Stassen going for triple atrium. Oh, Echo versus Viking. The Viking does not have an opportunity to use its superior range. And the slightly cheaper Echo squeaks it out. So I'm excited but not surprised to see those atriums. They make the myriads which deals with the marines. But the tanks deal with the myriads which usually results in us seeing lots of inducers. And now Terran making his first push. He's trying to get to the Chiron third. Oh, but the Crocs definitely have something to say about that. Those Convergence Blasts really give the Chiron battlefield control. 
Terran has to pull back, and that gives Chiron time to shape in more units. The Marines are trying to kite, but the Pulsars do not like flying children's toys. There's the pickup, and you officially abandons the effort. I prefer battles with tanks, he says. So back to my deep thoughts on unit composition. The question then is, what does the Terran do in response to the inducers? That's still to be determined, and right now it largely seems to be stimmed Marines. Which, if true, means we've got ourselves one big circle jerk. Which means how the players rebalance their armies is going to be so important. Yu is only just starting his plus one plus one right now for his infantry. Whereas Stassen is actually starting up his plus three plus two at this point. So definite edge to Chiron on upgrades and definite edge to Chiron on economy. Five bases to three and Chiron's up 25 workers. Indeed, Stassen's close to maxing out. Even still, it doesn't feel like Yu's that far behind in this game. But the more I think about those stats, the more I think maybe it should. But how does Stassen crack that Terran D? Well, he is making a Pantheon that's an endgame structure that gives you charges for the Titan. We've certainly seen that blast through a lot of Terran forces before. I am really impressed with the play of both these guys. They've got so much money coming in and they're still able to spend it at an incredible rate. Those low mineral and gas banks, when you couple that with the amount of money that they're generating per minute, very impressive. It also means they're killing each other at a very impressive rate. Oh, you is researching personal cloak for ghosts. Nobody likes their cloak to be impersonable. But seriously though, what is Stassen's plan for detection? Perhaps he just intends to destroy the Terran long before it ever comes to that. Stassen is steadily picking away here. His cruxes, they can cast Beholder and get some detection that way. But it's detection you specifically have to micro, so it's not ideal. Stassen adds a second Pantheon. He's gonna get serious about those space doggies. Well, Yu's gonna go for a fourth base. Stassen, however, is almost done base number six. He is just Zerg-like with his expansions. Speaking of Zerg, look who's attempting a run by here. He dumps his excess minerals into a squad of pariahs. They attack one base location only to find it empty. They attack another only to find there's no SCVs yet. Stassen may not appreciate how far ahead he is. He will satisfy himself by trying to take down that command center, but all you needs to do is lift it off. Or, or he could murder all the pariahs, that works too. And I'm ashamed to admit it, but our judicial system always looks the other way on pariah murder. It ain't right, but it's the truth. But this, this is an aggressive expansion. You going for the rich gas geyser in the center of the map. If he could somehow hold that, he might get back into this game. Having just hit Terran's outside expansions, it looks like Stassen's anticipating retaliation. He's reinforcing his outlying bases. Until now, he's actually gotten away with making about zero nullifiers. That's right, almost 13 minutes without a single turret. If you can do that and survive, you've saved yourself a lot of dough. Oh, extra foundry going down. I'm always hopeful that means we'll get to see a ward. But it might just mean more umbre. I'm assuming Yu's gonna move all his defenses forward and try to hold that forward base, but he hasn't really done it yet. Oh, here he goes. If I'm him, I think I stake my game on it. I say, this is the hill I am gonna die on. That black trough between the two bases is like the lowest of the low ground. It is a place where units go to die. Stassen, still holding the watchtowers. He's also now researching stealth compulsion. In addition to a plus one range bonus, that means that the Umbre does double damage with the shot it fires when it's cloaked. Oh, big battle. There's a fortress hug going on. Stassen threw his army at that base. His supply went from max down to below you. And then in the time it took me to say that, he remaxed. Ah, I see, he's ordered a bunch of space doggies. Those titans, they suck up a lot of supply. He's also making the Aegis. I always love to see that. You know, it's a favorite thing of mine. Now, we've watched you crush many a player with the titan. So it's kind of neat seeing him take a dose of his own medicine here. And a couple of those titans look like they have fuses in them. Use tank placement is really conservative. It's a nice deep position where it's really hard for Stassen to get at them. The downside though is that they sacrifice a lot of their range. His MVP though has got to be the fortress and the fortress hub. Oh, Stassen knows it. He's sending the Elytra after the SCVs who are trying to repair. Oh, that is killer smart. He is losing so much doing this though. Yu's going to wind up holding it. It's going to turn out to be a very efficient engagement for him. Oh yeah, here's the adjustment. Chiron is looking to add in inducers now. Terran going low tech, mostly focusing on Marines and Marauders at this point. 
The Aegis is done. It's somewhere. There it is at the triangular third. I do think his opponent is mostly focused on survival though. I don't think he's going to be attacking into that. Stassen's main is long mined out. He has skipped on his drop defense there though. Perhaps that's a vulnerability. You definitely subscribes to the Terran playbook that when in doubt, make another 10 command centers. Oh, that's called conjoined destructible towers. The idea is when you blow them apart, it adds new destructible debris, which in theory lengthens the rush distance on both sides of the map. For you though, it's gonna add another choke, which is another point of defense for him. So it makes a lot of sense here. Stassen's all maxed out, so he's spending his money on turrets, upgrades, and more citadels. He's actually gonna take that forward base himself. Oh, Yu's actually looking for some drop play. As I said previously, the main is vulnerable, but the problem is the bases to the side, they're all reinforced now. So I'm not sure that's the gaping flaw that I originally thought it was. Oh, I like this. Those inducers can just fire over the minerals. Yu has not mined out his gold minerals. What? No, no, Stassa, that was a great idea, man. I think he just wanted to move in and crush that base, saw nothing was there. But I think it would've been awesome for the inducers to lob their long range shots over those minerals. Punish your opponent for not mining them out. Oh, the drop marines just walked into a thicket of turrets. They're getting nothing done. That was not the drop location he wanted. The good news is that the lull has pretty much provided you with the opportunity to get maxed himself. Make no mistake, Stassen has the better bank and he's got a lot more bases. But he's only one bad engagement away from having this game flipped. And betting against you is not something people do around these parts. I mean you the player, obviously. I mean, I'm sure you're pretty good, but you know what I mean. Why do I cast this guy? He trips me up at least once a game. Stassen trying to see if he can get something done by attacking from the side here. EMPs firing off on the Titans. And then Liberators moving in with the Liberation Circles. This is not the same Terran Stassen was battling two minutes ago. Terran is much tougher now. That big golden rippling pond thing, that's the range of vision of the Oculus. You can see the tower that's casting it there. We know from the games we cast with Azure how useful that can be. Oh, hold that thought, you just found an opening. He's found a base without turrets, but with tons of supply structures. A Titan moves to defend, but it's only just one. The Marines take it down. Really good Sim City there. The Marines can't just slip by the buildings and go after the workers. They have to cut their way in and that's gonna buy the Chiron some time. Excellent building placement, but we do need the cavalry here. The Terran has cut his way through. Oh, it's an Aegis. The Marines are squashed in the corner with nowhere to move. Metavacs to the rescue, that was pretty cool. Somebody remind me we need to see that in the post-game replay. That single Titan there wants revenge. Those Marines killed his bro. Titans, man, they have a very strong bro code. Gotta avenge your bro. I don't know if that Aegis shield was clutch per se, because in a way it came kind of late, but it came right when he really needed it and the effect was just super cool. Stassen going after that rich gas base from a third angle. Thanks to the Oculus, he's got vision everywhere. He's brought so much firepower, this time he finally takes it down. Oh, I should mention before I forget, the Oculus pools of light, they don't just provide vision anymore with the recent patch, they now also detect. I think I've been reminding everybody in like a thousand videos that the Oculus does not detect. Well, now it does, which is particularly relevant here when Yu is cloaking his goat. Okay, you found the spot I wanted him to attack because there was no defense here. And once again, it's the Aegis to the rescue. Stassen's like, what are you talking about? I don't need a turret, I've got a teleporting Aegis. The interesting thing is Stassen is max, so he can't shape in units to defend. And if he runs out of Aegis energy, he's not gonna be able to teleport around either. Terran rebuilding that command center, it's a bit unfair. Stassen worked so hard and lost so many units building that thing. Look at that vision, he sees everything. He sees that command center going back up. He's like, oh no you don't, no way, no how. I will suck tank shots if I have to. I've got a $4,000 mineral bank. I'm prepared to spend it. Liberator Circle's going down. You knows he's gonna lose his command center. He just wants to make it as expensive as possible. Terran has been much more efficient than the Chiron. That's the one stat that you've been winning this game. And sometimes that determines who your victor ultimately is. Liberators flying in, setting up right on top of those myriads. Oh, but there's a convergence setting right up on top of them. The Liberators get completely wiped out. Despite that, Yu's actually gonna come out of this and come out of this ahead. 
He's got a supply lead and an army lead. At least until Stassen remaxes with his massive bank. Myriads and Titans with fresh fuses for them as well. And it's crazy, you can shape in his units practically right next to the Terran base. You snipes an Oculus, but has to go running back down into the pit of death. Hey, I should mention to you guys, in case you didn't know, you is a streamer and a YouTuber as well. He's actually recently just dropped a video on Chiron build orders. Probably the most comprehensive thing out there right now. Feel free to check that out. Hopefully there's a link in the description. If not, the channel's called You, Y-O-U. Stassen's coming back. He's looking to use the wave system. I've got the money, I can grind you down. Those Liberators do 75 damage with one of their shots. They can insta-kill and overkill an Elytra. Stassen thinks better of it, he pulls back and the Liberators are gonna reset. Oh, now you is maxed out for the first time and to do it, he's making battle cruisers. We recently watched him come back and win a game against the Genitron doing that. How does the battle cruiser look against Chiron? Oh, I love this. Stassen is taking a base on U's side of the map. Correction, he's taking two bases on U's side of the map. He's like, fine, if this game's going long, I'm sucking up your minerals. At the 20 minute mark, with the macro skills of these players, the original bases have mined out at this point. Myriads looking to get something done on the other side. There's a choke here. I think this is a tougher side for the Chiron to get up. I think he went for it because he knew the Liberators wouldn't be there. But guess what happens when your opponent has that Terran Micro? He just moves him back and forth. But the good news for Stassen may be he doesn't need to win. He just needs to keep the Terran busy long enough while he sucks up all the minerals on his side of the map. At some point, the pressure's going to be on you to do more than just defend. He's going to have to advance. Which is kind of what he's trying to do here. Oh! Aegis Shield at the forward position. I absolutely love this. This is as close as it gets to an offensive Aegis. Look at the horde of units tucked inside that shield. That is just brilliant play by Stassen. His army is protected and it's almost on top of the Terran base. Look at those inducers getting free shots off. Yu's gonna try to cut through it and bring it down. But that takes a thousand points of damage you gotta do. I mean, it's doable. It's just a thousand points of damage you'd really rather have allocated elsewhere. Yu has found one of those bases on his side of the map and he's dispatched a pair of battle cruisers to deal with it. Aegis Shield is knocked down big time army lead for Terran. Part of the reason though why Terran's got such a bigger army is Yu's got far less workers. He's relying on mules. It's one of the late game Terran advantages. You make those extra superfluous command centers. Oh, another Aegis. And now those Liberators are gonna die. They're just gonna get shot out of the sky. That is just so unfair. That, that is just wow. I mean, this is an ability that's supposed to rescue your main. But here it's giving Stassen control of the center of the battlefield. You're starting to realize what a tough task he's got ahead of him here. Aegis plus Inducers is just a deadly, deadly combo. Of course, let's not forget the Oculus' contribution here. It's giving that extra vision to the Inducers. That's how he's wailing away on the tanks. Interesting, you started researching Rapid Reignition System. That's that rarer Terran upgrade that actually reduces the cooldown on the Medivac's afterburners. It also bumps up the Medivac's base speed attack too. I wonder if he's actually got plans for that or he's just in that phase where you get every single upgrade that's left. Oh, the Remax Chiron army comes out of the shield and is just gonna mop up everything. Yu is kinda harboring a battle cruiser transition. That might get him out of this. But he went from leading this game to trailing once more. And I think it's pretty clear what caused that turnaround. Oh, he's gonna hold. I thought he was gonna get swept here. Very back and forth. I mean, I'm pretty sure Stassen's got the upper hand here. He's got a huge bank at this point. Yu has, though, put a stop to this mining on his side of the map. That was an absolute must, so he's got to be happy to check that off his bucket list. Now he's going to take it a step further and push deeper into Chiron territory. Last time, Stassen repelled him with a Volt Warp in, but he no longer really has the supply room to do that here. Yeah, he's going to have to pull at least a portion of his army to deal with this threat. Can you take advantage of this? Can he get rid of the Citadel? Will Stassen be pulled out of position long enough? The battle cruisers luring those inducers away. Nope, they're headed back. You did not take that moment to attack. That might have been the right call. That window was pretty small. His other option is just to ignore that citadel completely and try to go for other bases. 
Yu is slowly working on his air upgrades. I think he's getting serious about trying battle cruisers. Stassen says, I'll see your battle cruisers and raise you paragons. It's capital ships for both our players. Yes, the paragons outrange the battle cruisers, but those are your Yamato guns. Oh, it's the inducers to the rescue. Guess who does extra damage against massive? The inducers, that's who. Oh, that is a flaw in this battle cruiser transition. I did not think about that. Yu does the tactical jump followed by the SCV repair. I love that maneuver. If you watch AI games like I do from AI Arena, you will see a ton of that maneuver. The AI jumps the battle cruiser back right at the last possible second and then very cheaply heals it back up to full. Whoa, did not expect hamster balls at this phase of the game. Yu's got the calm statty knees and the fortress hug is gonna deal with them. That's a feather in Terran's cap, but I remain very concerned about how the battle cruisers are gonna deal with those inducers. As if in answer, you starts rallying up Marines. I think Stib Marines are the best solution. The problem is, as we said earlier, and I hope it's not like a broken record, the Myriads can deal with the Marines. You have to catch the Chiron on an imbalance when he's gone too hard on the inducers and not enough Myriads. I'm not sure Stassen's gonna let that happen. Though another way to look at it, he's just trying to use every charge he's got. First Umbra, now Subjectors. Though the more I think about it, I do like the Subjectors. They're gonna be pretty efficient against battle cruisers, I would think. They're not like Kryptonite like the Inducers, but still pretty excellent. He's like, yes, Inducers can kill one BC, but they can't kill an entire horde of them. Stassen's like, wanna bet? Oh man, these armies. Yu's going to commit. He wants that Citadel. Is there any just... No, but the BCs just can't take the Inducer hits. Look at that. Look how effective just simple Marines are against the Inducers when there's no Myriads around. With only one Myriad, they can just stim into everything. Look at the battle cruisers having a pity party. No, I took more Inducer shots. I need to be healed first. It's a well-known fact that battle cruisers are a bit whiny. Stassen would love to interrupt that pity party, but there are still deeply entrenched tanks. And a fortress. Ah, it's the old 27 minute Marines versus Subjectors matchup. Not something you expect to see at this phase of the game. Wake up, fortress. Oh, this is clever. He's outranging that fortress. Or he was. Now I think he's taking shots from it. Yeah, I think this has to be micro very carefully. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. There's at least half a hug in that fortress now, and that's going to be it for the Subjectors. Stassen's looking elsewhere, which means I probably should be, but I can't look away. If the health bar on the fortress is going up, it's not working. They're just going to turn into pools of ochre. Well, this is unnecessary. You just winning all these little victories everywhere, but I think he's still losing the war. Stassen has a huge healthy bank, and he is getting a toehold into the Terran forward base. Yeah, the well-entrenched tanks are gone. Oh, tactical jump to the rescue here. The BCs jump on top of the Chiron army. Stassen needs to find his crux and drop some convergence spells on those BCs, kind of like he did to the Liberators. Whoa, that really worked for the Terran. They both lost a ton of supply there, but Stassen took the worst of it. He finally had that beach landing over the Terran base. And just because the Chiron enjoyed proving me wrong, the Umbra have taken over the lower left base. I did not think they had that in them, and neither do the battle cruisers. The Umbra are cloaking as fast as they can. You can't see me, I'm hiding behind my finger. But you cheats, he drops a scan. Comstat, man, it's so good. You know, we talk a lot about Chiron detection, and I often sort of imply how it may be one of the weaker points of the Chiron race. But what I always seem to leave out of these discussions is that the Geyer is the detector. That is a Chiron air unit that we do not see a lot of. For a brief period, it was hugely popular. It had that all-powerful prism spell that people are figuring out how to use. But it got a rework, and we just haven't seen a lot of it ever since. Hold that thought, because Stassen has broken through again. With the BCs out of position, he's driving in. Does you have the energy for a tactical jump? He does. Oh, and Stassen heard me. He's brought Crux. He needs to drop convergences like he's never dropped them before. There's one. But the crux of the matter is that the BCs cut down the crux. The subjectors come running in. They're going to chase off the battle cruisers. 
And the cycle continues, but I think Yu is losing ground. Yu's last hope here may be that he's finishing up quadruple numeric upgrades. Picking up the last of his air and mech upgrades. Yes, it took him a full half hour to get them, but in fairness, he has been kind of busy. Oh, I love this. I would spam energize as much as humanly possible. Suck up as many of those minerals as you can, because you know that base isn't going to last long. Speaking of mineral deposits, Yu's forward base is pretty much mined out at this point. So it's no longer the base itself that has strategic importance, it's more of the forward position aspect of it. Neo Humanity is a fun map, I gotta say. The double pits of death in the center are really entertaining and do lead to some good games. There's so many golden pools around here you'd think Stassen was having a spa day. Don't mind us, we're just here for the many petties. And to kill your transferring SCVs, that was unfortunate for you. I mean the Terran, sorry. I'm sure you enjoyed it as much as I did. Yeah, that actually was an important pickoff. You went from 60 workers to 40 in a span of about 3 seconds. Not only does he not have many mineral patches left, he doesn't have the workers to collect them if he did. Okay, so admittedly the battle cruisers don't quite blow up when the convergence hit them, but they really do take their toll. They just can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the subjectors anymore after that. They gotta go back to their pity party, I mean the repair party. Yeah, BCs, you just got beat up by units at a fraction of your price. Own it. Ugh, the spa day continues. Sometimes I wonder if the Oculus vision pools, the real effect is the morale damage it has on the opposing player. Just knowing that your opponent is watching your every move and you have no idea what to do about it, it's gotta be so vexing. I mean, I'm certainly not talking from personal experience. No, sir. Not at all. Asking for a friend. Oh, Marine's going on a bit of a tour here, trying to get something done. I like this. He knows Stassen's supply is pretty much devoted to winning that battle in the center of the map. I was half expecting an Aegis shield there, but it doesn't come and the Citadel dies. If you're interested in the Aegis at all, I've actually done a video on some of the finer points of it, and it's got some cool footage with a lot of different units getting bounced around by the force field. Stassen's bank is actually getting pretty low. I think this is the first time all game you've actually been ahead on minerals. But since he's losing a base, I don't know how long that's going to last. I mean, as of right now, Yu is actually pulling in very few minerals. Even less gas, which may be why he's focusing on making marines right now. Yeah, it's true, the Terran economy is in serious shambles. To be fair, the Chiron economy is a fraction of what it once was. But I would take that fraction over what the Terran has any day. There's no sign that Terran's actually remaking his workers. I think he's gonna make a last ditch effort to try to win this with the army he has. It sounds crazy, but he's certainly done it before. We are definitely in a rabbit out of a hat territory though. Oh, battlecruiser bounce. That is a first. If I don't remember to put that in the post game, somebody shoot me. But in fairness to my bullet ridden corpse, a lot of things have happened in this game and it ain't over yet. It's a fortress hug, but Stassen goes all in, and he brings it down. It's not like there were a lot of minerals there, but now Yu has even less. He is down to dribs and drabs and pure starvation. He's gonna tax his bank and make a couple more tanks. Stassen actually making citadels and workers. He's got plans for the ultra long game. Yu going on tour with his medevacs. Looking for weak points, but the Aegis is gonna make them hard to find. He is piercing deep into the heart of Chiron territory here. Stassen follows him with an aperture dropship of his own. Who's got the bigger force here? Perhaps the late late game will be decided by these early game units. You says you ain't got enough. This is getting interesting. Is this a last gasp or is this a strike to the heart here? Stassen needs to shape something in to deal with this. Or is it that his attention has to stay focused on the battlecruiser force? I don't want to even know how many kills are on those BCs at this point. It's just, oh, the humanity on Neo Humanity. Stassen has actually stopped macroing. That might be exhaustion more than anything else. He's actually got money, whereas you, who is basically broke, is still trying to crank out Marines. He's trying to hollow out the production facilities at that main, but boy, are there a lot of them. Oh my god, you's got money! It is a mule hammer to end all mule hammers. Stassen looks flustered. I'm not sure he can comprehend. This game is his to lose. He needs to not lose it. That's some quality coaching right there. Don't lose. There he goes. He heard my pep talk. He's starting to rebuild. 
making new edifices. He's got the bigger army on paper. Can it deal with the battle cruisers though? Yu's trying to add a couple of new gas geysers at his new base. That could really change things here. A real Mexican standoff brewing here, but that can't last. Snipe on the new CC. Stassen's gonna get a second one here. He pulls back because he can't take the tank hits. And the orbital survives. This game, just when I think it has to end. Plot twist, Stassen successfully shuts down Yu's new base. His refineries will not finish. That was key. Yu needed his battle cruisers over there to defend. But if he shunted them over to the right, he could have lost the middle. But great maneuver by Stassen. That was exactly what he needed to do. He didn't just keep Yu busy, he kept the observer busy. And then he sniped the single most important piece of real estate on the map. Yu's mineral production is officially zero. There is nothing coming in. Not a zilch zero. I often point out where one player has double or triple the mineral production of the other. Technically, I believe it's now infinite. And to boot, there are only 10 SCVs left on this map. The Oculus pools are cutting deep into Yu's base now. Chiron is chipping away. Terran is losing ground. As Yu's army gets chipped away, he is unable to replace it. He can't just be efficient anymore. He has to be insanely efficient. That is not a bad start, but he needs to do it 13 more times. Look at that, Stassen building Oculus is on you side of the map. That's just inexcusable behavior. Apparently this car trip has gone on so long, these two kids no longer care whose side of the car they're on. Oh, you started long distance mining somewhere. He's got a couple dribs and drabs coming in. But Stassen is on his front doorstep. Can the battle cruisers push this back one more time? Oh, that's a ton of volts. They snipe a BC. Good micro by Stassen. He had them focus fire there. The volt pack firing as one. Oh, you raises the depot well to stop the Chiron from running in. He's got a tank behind it. Meanwhile, a defensive shape in of volts is going to stop the Terran Marines from getting any further. And the Chiron barbarians are at the gate. The battle cruisers seem helpless to stop this. They just don't have the Yamato energy to attack from distance. If they close, the Volt Pack will be there. Yu tries to attack from both sides. The Elytra chew through the Marines. The BCs are holding their ground. This could be it. Terran supply collapses. Chiron driving into the heart of the Terrans. It's GG. What was that? A 40 minute KVT? Outstanding. Who am I kidding here? This post game is going to be all Aegis porn. Chicka bow bow. There was a lot going on in this multifaceted game. And of course, you don't want to point to just one thing. But if you had to, the Aegis would be high on the list. The forward position Aegis in the center of the map was a big deal. Now I know a lot of peeps are going to want to declare the Aegis is overpowered and Sure, they might be right to say so, but let me say this. Think about the Terran Fortress hug. How many games have we seen that tip the scales? It's incredibly powerful, and while it chews up some minerals, it has no energy cost. You can do it forever if you have to. And how about battery overcharge? 14 seconds of free battery recharge. The pillar of the Protoss defense. Now, battery overcharge did get a major nerf in the latest patch. Instead of potentially charging 1,440 shields, it now has a max recharge of 1,080. Coincidentally, that's really close to the Chiron Aegis shield of 1,000 hit points. So maybe it's not OP, but it could be. We haven't really seen a strong meta of how to really deal with an Aegis. If anybody really knows the answer to that question, I only wish there was a place where you could somehow leave your thoughts close to this video. Unfortunately, there is no such technology. Anywho, the end game stats actually suggest this game really wasn't about the Aegis at all. The number one unit death at 260 was the Marine. So that really tells me that it was the Myriads and the Elytra that did a lot of crazy damage this game. And then interestingly, it's the Elytra that come in second 
with 252 deaths. And that tells me that the tanks were probably doing a lot of work in this game. And despite Yu's excellent tank placement, 26 tanks died in this game. Regardless, it really makes you think. Oh, and I do have an announcement. No, it's not Zero Space, because I bet you already know about that. But hey, if you're an RTS fan, you probably do want to go check out the Zero Space Kickstarter. It's a pretty big deal. No, I want to make sure all the StarCraft fans out there know that Nakma released his latest cinematic. This guy basically spends months painstakingly making new StarCraft cutscenes of insane quality, and it's rare that they come out. Here's the link for his newest one, or you could just search for StarCraft Tassadar Cinematic 2023, Episode 1. It's about one and a half minutes long. This dude deserves more views. Tell him Zug sent you. But don't say anything about a muffin basket, because I don't think he'd get it. Anywho... That's it for me. Hope you enjoyed this one. From my base to yours, Zugs Wang out.